where students live and where they learn actually really, really matters. It matters a lot not only on how they learn, but how much they eventually earn, health outcomes, etc. So there's this robust you know, research base that really stating that places matter. And with the GIS technology, you're able to locate the school improvement data within the context of a variety of other social factors. You begin to see that not only in these places um, are schools struggling, but also in these places are high concentrations of unemployment and you've got health factors. It starts to develop this picture to where this isn't a statewide issue. Um, it's actually a very specific place issue. There's specific places where there's multiple intersecting factors. Um, and in order to go in and disrupt those factors, you have to have a systemic approach. But in order to design a systemic approach, you have to see where there's integrating systems. And so that's really the cool thing about visualizing multiple intersecting data sets in a spatial way is it really points your eye to particular places. Part of what GIS does is it, it merges what they call shape files, um, but that's really like the shape of your county or the shape of your state. And you match those shapes with specific data points. Once you take that and you've merged it, then you go about the work of symbolizing it. If you're thinking about intersecting layers of a variety of data, whether it's social you know, poverty plus schools in an improvement required status, um, you think about how, how you symbolize those together to be able to show that relationship in space. So at AIR, I work for predominantly for the Texas Comprehensive Center. Through that role, part of what we do is provide technical assistance in, um, in the service of capacity building with our state agencies. So we were very interested in taking this new tool and to use it as a centerpiece of a cross-divisional collaboration. So what you see there is this progression from systems integrated quantitative data shown spatially to on the ground qualitative research. So it is this really tight um, coupling of research and practice. What we're finding by depicting all of those factors um, in a spatial way, it's not only faster to point your eye to a particular place and say, whoa, that's a, there's a knot there. This warrants further investigation, um, but it's also really emotional. For example, once you start underlying um, putting in layers of economic data, or once you begin to look at um, how our cities are racialized and segregated by economics and race, these social justice imperatives scream at you, um, particularly in your big urban areas to where you have these intense pockets of racial and economic segregation that also happen to be the only places you have low performing schools. All of the work around you know, what, what we've been calling place-based strategic planning, for me that really comes from a place of having been a practitioner in the trenches in schools that have been under various forms of school improvement sanctions. Many communities feel that improvement efforts have been done to them and not with them. At the end of the day, the people who are impacted by school improvement efforts have to be they're the ones who are going to be living and breathing it in the long term. They're the ones who are going to be sustaining the work. It's the elders in the community. It's the families in the community. It's the churches in the community. That's the place it's going to live. It's not going to live at the state level. From the beginning, you have to be thinking in terms of place and you have to be thinking in terms of people. And I think that's the difference between making a decision from a dashboard or a spreadsheet and making a decision from a geographically specific place because then you begin to put names and faces. Now you're talking about cities and streets and neighborhoods and because you're talking about that you're talking about people. We really believe that there is a different way that we could be working together, we could put systems and processes and tools in place that would help us um, better align our resources to have more of an impact.